To continue our inspirational stories, we are joined by a man who started out in his garage with a concrete mixer and a benchtop grinder, making his first jar of peanut butter 10 years ago. Now turning out 3.5 million jars a year. I'd say that number would be growing too. Let's welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge, Pick's Peanut Butters, Pick Pico. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Phil. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so nice to have you here. First up, I have to ask you, how many peanuts do you reckon you go through a week? Well, 30 to, 30 to 40 tonnes a week. <gasps> That's a huge amount of peanuts. I don't know how many nuts that represents. Get a lot of concrete grinders for that one. Yeah. So it's that now, but take us right back to the start when it was a concrete mixer and a grinder. How, so, what were you going through then? So I bought my first, I, look, I looked around for someone who would sell me wholesale peanuts and I bought half a tonne wow. of peanuts, which was 25 sacks, and I thought this is a huge amount. Yeah. And uh, so that was half a tonne and, we, and, and, I, and that t lasted six months, I think. So why did you start to make peanut butter? I mean, what was the drive? Well, I always liked peanut butter, and I got really cross when, <laughs> when I started buying peanut butter with, with sugar in it. We never used to have it in New Zealand. Yes. No. That's right. It turned up about 15 years ago. Yeah, it did. And I hated it. And it tasted mm. quite different too. Horrible, yeah. So you went back at this, I'll make my own. Well, yeah, I rang them up. I rang them up and said, why are you putting sugar in my peanut butter? And they said, well, sir, we do market surveys, and everyone likes sugar in their peanut butter. Well, Except you, you well obviously. Yeah, you, I, I think you have to. You know, we could go out there and happily market your peanut butter for you because we will just rave about it till oh, the cows come home. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. You do have quite a different approach to marketing, though, don't you? What's your ethos? Well, I, I've always thought that that you, I, I want to be as real as I can, you know. So we, we use glass jars and real peanut butter, real peanuts, and I've, I've, I don't, I, I don't want to bore people. I don't want to. We don't advertise, so I don't advertising to me is sort of. Boring, you know, it's yeah. like annoying. It's annoying. I'm sorry, I mean, I love. No, that's all right. I'm not going to pull you up about your advertising <laughs> or lack of. I'm thinking, well, you yeah. don't advertise, but yet we all know about Pix Peanut Butter. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, if you talk to people, you know, I would rather have one person really engaged with it, like you guys, mm. than have 100,000 people think, oh, I must buy that one day. You know? And so that one person, they'll talk to you, talk to your friends, and, you know, you can have the smartest sales guy in the world sort of going around talking to people, but it doesn't, you know, you won't listen to them any. You won't listen to it, but you will listen to a friend of yours that says, hey, this is really nice, mm. give it a go. With yeah. a product like yours, it would be so easy to take that offshore when things get bigger, but you, you haven't done that. Why? How important is the Kiwi heritage to oh, peanut butter? So manufacturing offshore, yeah, you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. No, no well, we, come from, we make it in Nelson, and we've had such support from the Nelson community. And it's such a, an ingrained part of our story that, you know, it just really, it really resonates. And it's yeah. sort of New Zealand, the New Zealand story is amazing, but coming from Nelson, a small town, and I go, first time I talk about our peanut butter anywhere overseas, I say, we make it in Nelson, it's a beautiful place, have you been there yet? And mm. they say, oh, I want to go there. And then you say, come for a tour around my peanut, yeah, peanut butter yeah, factory. Yeah, it's a but highlight of any visit. Yeah. Maybe a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, how has that shaped the brand as it is today, do you think, starting it and, and still being in Nelson? Oh, I think it's a very powerful thing, you know. It really gives us and nails us home to our home base. And I, I, we wouldn't be the same if we were out, based out in Penrose there, you know. It wouldn't be the same business at all. And so it's just coming from a small town. I, you know, I don't know why more people don't base their businesses in smaller towns because it gives you a huge amount of, of, of power and it gives you a huge yeah. community support. Anything we do there, people notice it. It's really, really neat. Apart from the obvious, obviously the scale has grown monumentally in 10 years, but for you, how have things changed in that time? Well, I've, I've gone from just sort of being a sort of old hippie guy, sort of selling stuff at the market, <laughs> to being a sort of a tycoon sort of person, you know? And how I've does that feel? Well, I really like it. You know? I'm, a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit blind now, you know, and, and, I, uh, and, and, it, and, it, and it gives me the opportunity to wander around, talk to people, and, uh, you know, and I've got all these people. I'm, I'm part of this huge team. Mm -hmm. There's 45 of us there. I've never been mm -hmm. part of a team in my life, and it's such a neat thing to be. Uh, you mentioned your eyesight then. Uh, quite a few people probably don't know that you are losing your sight. I mean, how has this impacted on, on your life? Uh, it was a bit hard initially. You know, I had to give up driving and I can't read and I don't recognise face as well. So, mm. uh, but apart from that, the, the amazing thing about it, you know, I, I meet other, lots of other guys who've, who've got extraordinary businesses, but they're running themselves ragged trying to do everything. And I've had to learn to delegate. So mm. I've had to delegate. And, and 
So we've got amazing people doing extraordinary things there, and I don't annoy them because I can't sort of sit over their shoulder and well, say... they can creep in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> when you get under the table, they, <laughs> they, do, they love it, they love Be it. Be quiet, yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a finalist in this year's Attitude Awards. How yeah. does that feel? Well, it was a real surprise to be nominated, you know. I mean, we, we enter a lot of awards, but I, I hadn't uh, had a go at entering that, and, and, and so we were nominated, and so it was really humbling to be nominated. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. There are some amazing people, you know, receive those awards, and mm. I mean, I'm pretty... You know, it's not really a handicap to me, and, and I don't... Uh, but I'm really looking forward to meeting the people there and... Mm. Seeing how it goes. What would you like to do in the future? Like, what are the sort of what's the big picture for Pix Peanut Butter? Well, more of the same. I'd like to I'd like to get bigger and employ more people. It's wonderful. It's mm. wonderful having this sort of this little world where people go to and and most of our guys, you know, just about all of them love going to work. It's mm. exciting. That's it's great. Really Where's neat. your biggest market? Like overseas? Uh, currently, it's Australia, but China's growing really fast. So you know, the our Chinese customers keep coming to us and saying, "Can we have another sort of?" five containers a month or something. Wow. It's just wow. mad. That's it's great. really crazy. So. We heard there might be a, a little rumour that you might be trying to grow peanuts in New Zealand. We are. We're having a go at growing them up in Northland this year. So uh, we've been trying to do this for a while, but we're just going to do a few small uh, trial patches with some uh, special uh, peanut seeds that we're getting from Australia. See how that goes. Because mm, that's, a, that's a lot of peanuts you need. Oh, well, it would be nice. It'd be nice just to make New Zealand's first completely homemade peanut butter, yeah. but I don't think we'll be able to make as You're much. You're not going to be able to meet demand. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to those at home that have got a really great idea, but they just don't know where to start? I'd say just... Just start. Just do something, and and I think you know if your if your idea takes you know sort of five million dollars to get it off the ground, just go and get, get and have another idea and have something that you can scale. I think you get something that you can start small and just let it grow. I think too many people think, oh, I've got a really good idea, but it needs millions of dollars to get it going. Yeah. So a small idea, get it go, get started, and just you know let it grow. Have a crack. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, well, it's been an absolute me. pleasure having yeah. you here. Yeah. I feel quite yeah. honoured to actually so meet wonderful. you. Oh, um, we have to check <laughs> Pick's bag on the way out because I know he never travels anywhere without peanut butter too, so it might, you know, right. it's, it's worth a yeah. check. <laughs> and if you would like to hear more from Pick, you can head to their Facebook page.